that there may be some great um, genetic meaning about the origin of what I'm calling ensoulment, or getting a soul, in the DNA when this implosion happens. In what was described in the um, Sumerian tablets and even in the Bible as what it meant to fall, as in the fallen ones, or uh, Lucifer, or more particularly Nephilim, or the order of the Nephites, which was transliterated literally as the fallen ones. What I'd suggest to you humbly here is the possibility that what it means to fall is literally the loss of the ability to implode or self-steer your own genetic material through the speed of light into time. The little, uh, the little joke we've come up with from various sources here is that if you have to travel in time using heavy metal instead of genetic material itself, that means you're, quote, from the wrong side of the tracks, or it's, it's rather embarrassing, or you have fallen. In order to understand this principle we're suggesting that um, the genetic material loses this self-steering ability with the loss of bliss, and therefore the beginning of relying on external sources for that implosion in the DNA is the story of gold mining on this planet. And so that's this, this fun little story we're going to tell which weaves together the theme of mana in the Bible and Ormes as is described by David Hudson in ortho, ortho molecular rearranged gold powder essentially which is, sounds very similar to the wormy, the worm, and uh, the spice, as it was described in the book Doom, where you ate this powder, your eyes turned blue, and you became essentially able to steer yourself in time. And the story was that they came to this planet, the desert planet, Arrakis. And Arrakis, by the way, is literally a star in the star system Draco, from which we believe these Anunnaki came. In fact, I'd like to play you a little picture about this on the website uh, danwinter.com slash lionpath. So here is a picture of a Sumerian goddess statue. Uh, it's a goddess figurine from the Ubayad. And here is a drawing of the way the Syrian Anunnaki versus what were called the Draco from Alpha Draconis, which is where the star uh, Arrakis is located. And Draco, incidentally, is the shape of the Arabic letter L, and um, it's the layout of Angkor Wat and the pyramids at Senshi in China. And here's another drawing of a Draco from various people who believe they've seen them, and there are many. But what I'd like to play for you here is a little animation. Maybe we could zoom in on this for just a second. So here's the drawing of a Draco or Orion Queen in that sense, morphed to this Sumerian goddess statue. And the similarity is rather evident. Now, this is perhaps a bit overdramatic, and you could say a bit speculative, and you would be right. But there's too much evidence on our planet of this relationship of ancient interventionism and culture. We just um, spent a delightful evening with a doctor here yesterday who told us a story about how the Mongolian culture uh, inspired what became the Kazatsan, Kazatsan, Kazakhs, the Kazakhs, the Khazars, and which became the Ashkenazi, which then became the branch of the, the Jewish tradition, which he painted this elaborate picture of how uh, the Bank of England and all the Masonics were all influenced by this Ashkenazi order. And so you get this kind of classic um, New World Order story, which all of us have heard pieces of. And one of the storals to that little Mori, however much you believe it, it usually is to see how our gene pool has, in a way, it seems, been parasitized, or 
another way to look at it is uh, some of us believe that the Magdalene lineage was another name for the Mogs of the Orion Queens, this culture from Orion, and uh, yet the Mog lineage becomes the inspiration for Magdalene's children whom the Templars are protecting, and the Templars install insurance and banking for the first time in the West, which then gets bad press under the same skull and bones of Magdalene, purportedly, and the insurance and banking with the same largest navy on the planet with bad PR is called the Pirates. And then that same skull and bones does the insurance and banking on the psychoactive substances, which is the drug cartel of the CIA, started by the Order of Skull and Bones, regulating the psychoactive substances. And always, it's kind of a tax on access to the wormhole via access to external sources of psychoactive substance, in this case, drugs. Well, if we look at the purported reputation of this Orion culture, uh, and I reference in this regard uh, several books, one in particular, uh, Guardians of the Grail by Robert Morningsky, where he purports to interpret significant portions of their language based upon their genetic roots in the shape of what we would call the Velociraptor. Now this is not to say that everything reptilian is evil, because I strongly believe that that chutzpah, that strength, that power, that guts, that juiciness up the reptilian brain stem is what gives us the ability to have powerful kundalini and tantra and bliss and squirt through the stars. So the downside of the story is, yes, there was a fallen element of that what may be draconian and related interventionism among the Anunnaki and uh, this stories we have about the firefight under Dulce where the Dracos killed such a high number of our the American fastest crack Navy SWAT teams uh, like they were flies and yet at the same time and, and also you have these many stories about uh, uh, um, abduction of humans and the eating of live glands which you can understand because if you lose the ability to make glandular juice then naturally you need an outside source for that we call that the addictive personality. Yet, on the other hand, you have this incredible story in Genesis of the Grail Kings by Lawrence Gardner, where he exquisitely narrates that this Draco family, he says explicitly historically Draco, became our story of the dragon cult, and Sumer, S-U-M-M-A-I-R-E, as in Sumeria, the Sumerians, literally means the dragon family or the reptiles in Celtic, you see. so. Here is Gardner telling the story about how the Anunnaki fabricated the high end of their genetic experiments in the Cain and Abel story, which the word Cain, as in Cain and Abel, C-A-I-N, becomes the word C-A-Y-I-N, which becomes our word for king. And he says this is the first in the lineage of the Grail Kings. And this was, in fact, an extended experiment, and it was it was the same kind of genetic engineering they did to install the kings and queens in the royal houses of Europe for thousands of years that we do and think nothing of when we breed show dogs or show horses. It's the same kind of skill or activity. And we think at first this is sacrilegious. And indeed, if the, if the bliss, if the spontaneity, if the freedom goes out of these bloodline crosses, we do indeed lose the passion and bliss that ensouls DNA. And we get, as a result, the what I call the Borg Queen phenomena. So what I'd like to try to describe now is the principle of how it is that those who become externally addicted to what it is that puts fire in their blood eventually become fallen or Borg-like, uh, which I call the addictive or mucus-making personality, versus those who learn to make that fire from the inside out, the glandular skill to build Phi's ray implosion in the heart's voltage that starts this turning inside out-ness happening recursively in the field effect in the center, 
the electrical center of gravity of the body, that ultimately then creates the sound ponytail that braids the DNA into the implosion that ensouls.